the brain is mind mapping software. And today, I'm going to do a quick review of what it's all about, have a look inside, give you an idea of what I like, what I don't like, and we'll see whether it's worth picking up. Let's do it! Hey everyone, it's Kevin Oxner here. I'm the author of the motivational fable, Diamonds and Silver. And of course, you can catch me online at yourmakingme.com. I'll throw up a quick link to the site here. Today, what I want to talk about is a cool little program called The Brain. What I'm doing is I'm doing a seven-day series. I'm doing one review a day on seven different mind mapping programs. Today, I've never tried this one before. I've picked it up. I'm trying The Brain today. I'll throw it right up to the site. Their, their website is thebrain.com. So fairly easy to, to pick up here. I want to go in and just give you some initial impressions of what I thought about this thing. Give you some details first of all about what I've got. And then we're going to get into what I like, what I don't like. And I've got a couple things where I'm sitting on the fence, whether I'm not sure if it's really good or really bad. Okay, so let's get into the details. First of all, I'm using version 7.0.4.5, if that matters to you. If not, but I'm using version 7. I am using the free version. I just thought I'd download it today and give it a shot and see what I think about it and you know put it through its paces. This is a 30-day trial of the pro version. So for 30 days for the first month, you get the pro version. After that, it'll just drop off and give you the free only version, which limits some of the things you can do. What do you... Let me just go here to the upgrade. You can upgrade. It's um, it's $219 to buy this thing. It's $108 a year if you want the service option on top of that. And there's some packages where you can mix and match and whatever, whatever else it is. If you want the free version, hey, you've already got it. If you've already downloaded this thing and you're good to go. And when you look at the, the pro version, I looked at a couple of things you can get. And a couple of things here you can get are file attachments, which are really cool, actually. You can you can just drag and drop things, and it's going to attach. And the whole point is that you can just drag almost your whole life into this thing. You can also merge brains, which will be nice as well. If someone's working on one, you're working on, on another one. You can merge things, or you can merge several that you're working on. It has Outlook integration, which might be nice if you want to try and have some email interaction as well. You can grab some attachments, whatever else it is. You can search the web files on your computer and attachments if you have the iOS or the the Windows version. Now, a couple of initial impressions. Some of the things I looked at when I got into this is I really, really made me wonder if there was a faster way to write my information out and get it into the brain. What I'm used to, I've used mind mapping tools for years, is I'm used to a bit of a quicker interface. What I had to do is learn the system and the flow of how this thing works. And it's okay. What you need to do is you need to try and find where the, the parent node is, whichever one you want to add something to, and you've got to press F6. Or you could you get ultimately you could go into the, the file menu and you can start adding things. I don't like hitting in, in the menus up here. I'd rather just find a have a shortcut or hit enter or a tab or something so I can start entering things. So I've got to hit the F6 key and I can enter whatever you want to hit in here. Oops. Fairly slick once you get it going. It looks decent. I think this spinning thing is a little I think it's a little too much. I I know where I am. It's it's a gigantic thing, so I, I understand what's going on, but I don't know if I need the animation. I think after a while it would get kind of it would bug me a little bit. The let's click on this here. Oh, it doesn't give me the whole thing. There we go. Yeah, the, the tips bar. Just let me sit there. That was a good thing. When I first opened it up, it had one of those tips bars where it says, you know, do you want tips every time you open the program? And I said, well, I'll look through them all. They had 102 tips. I went through all 102. Some were decent. Some were so so. But it definitely helped me get going faster. They they set it up in a way where I could get moving fairly quickly. The overall, though, I thought it was decent. Just a little bit harder to get things going. It's, for me, as a Windows user, it doesn't doesn't seem as intuitive. It doesn't seem like I can use my shortcut keys, and that's what I love doing is using my keyboard and the mouse to make things move even faster instead of sitting there and clicking on everything and using the mouse for absolutely everything. That's kind of kind of frustrating for me. It slows me down quite a bit. Now going back here. Uh, what I want to get into is a little bit of the visual appeal. Like I've said, if you caught my You're Making Me dot com podcast episode twenty five, I talk about how, although visual appeal isn't the most important thing whenever you're, you're looking for a mind mapping solution, it's definitely important. If you have a crappy, if you have an ugly looking mind mapping software, it's going to hold you back, and you're going to be embarrassed to show it to people, or at least you should be embarrassed to show it to people if the stuff you're using looks old and archaic and looks ugly. I've got a couple of things I liked about this. I'm just gonna, I can I can use my scroll wheel to 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 blow up and, and minimize and all those good things here too. The built-in themes I put are very pleasing. That doesn't make sense. The built-in themes were, were actually not 
that good. I wasn't very happy with the built-in themes. They they were not very pleasing to me. Um, it looks good so far. Like it, it looks, it has a nice look to it. It looks fairly professional. Uh, some sometimes the font, this this basic font, I didn't go in and change it because I wanted you to be able to see it. It's okay for me. It, it looks a little bit old school, but it's all right. And the last thing too is transparent mode. Oh my goodness. The whole point of using this brain, what they're trying to get you to do, is use it in your everyday life for everything. Transparent mode is awesome. This is one of the cool, cool features of the brain. You head over to the Windows tab, and you certainly options you can move it to the left, up, down, bottom, whatever else you want. Transparent mode, though, what it'll do, let me just get this done, is it'll take you right back to your desktop. So you can see everything down below it, and you're still using this thing. You can even... Slide it to the side and hide it. You can do searches on it. So you can do a search for a particular thing. We've got visual appeal already. We can tell we're already linked to visual appeal. And when we're ready, we can just click it and it'll bring it back out for us. Really, really cool feature. I, I like this feature a lot about having this so we can look behind it and keep doing our regular work and only call it up and use it when we need it. Very, very cool feature. The... Uh, one thing that annoys me a little bit here is it seems like sometimes when you're doing a lot of dragging and dropping and whatever else, you have to keep going to a spot and then dragging to it. You, you, you can't just drag across as easily from what I've, what I've been able to in, in figure out. I'm going to talk about the good things first. Let's get into these here. Oh, I better shrink it up a little bit so we can have a, a better view. Okay, one thing I liked very good is that there is a backup. It's a very good backup system. It unfortunately it's not automatic, but it's it's it works pretty slick. You can go into the file menu. And where's here? There we go. Create brain zip. You can create a zip file of whatever you have. And I highly, highly recommend that you do this because I have had instances and we all I'm sure we all had stories where something hasn't been backed up. You've got three months worth of data in there and you lose everything. So if you have something that you back up on a weekly basis or monthly basis, whatever it is for your personal situation, then go ahead and it actually makes it fairly easy to do that. There's a, a past a past thought list. This is because, this actually shows you what the thoughts are that you've been working on in the recent past. So if you've been working on something over the last week or two weeks, you can go back and you can see from newest to oldest what you've been working on. And that would just, just a quick way to, to see what you've been working on and get back into it. The other thing I like is the private thoughts. Private thoughts is that you can actually have these maps. You can publish these maps and share these maps. If you add something as a private thought, though, what it will do is it'll let you, when you publish that map, obviously everything else will publish except anything that you've marked as a private thought. I like that as opposed to sometimes some other programs where you have to write everything down and before you publish it, you've got to go through and delete things because you don't want people seeing this way you put everything on there, it stays on there, and every time you publish an update, you're still fine, but the, the private thoughts are right there. The search is very, very, very cool. I like the, the ability to um, just do a search, and you can see in the bottom corner, it lets me, it, it's, as you start searching, it starts giving you suggestions about what you might be looking for. When you hit the actual search button, it'll call things up and give you the actual search. Just again, another neat function that works well. It works quickly and it's designed really to help you work through a lot of information. I do look at this, the, I call it the scroll keys. It's actually the arrow keys, but you can use the arrow keys to, I don't think it's a little hard to see. There's a little, the little green circle moving around and you can move this before you dig deeper into it. So it's not, what I like is it doesn't open things up as you go through it. Very cool. You can also link to people and their companies and other acquaintances. So if say John works at ABC company, you can link those two things together. And then if he knows this person, he's married to this person, you can start linking people together so that when you start working on one thing, everything starts connecting and, and working together. I didn't do much of that right now, but it's a pretty neat feature. And I think it's a, it's a, something you might want to consider if you decide to go ahead with the brain. A couple of things I'm sitting on the fence with, with the brain. One is the built in calendar. I didn't really go much into a detail. It looked okay. It looked like a basic calendar. That's all right. The other thing that I'm, it's, it's good that they have it, but maybe how they have it isn't the greatest, is they have iOS and Android support, but you have to go to their website to use it. So there's no app, but you, you, there is support. You can do it, but you've got to, you have to go through and 
be typing in the browser on your on your phone. So up to you if you want to be doing those kinds of things. So of course, what you're wondering now is what are the bad, Kevin? Let's get into some of the bad things. The one of the things that I found really wasn't super intuitive at first was minimizing this the tab at the bottom. And I found out later on just by looking that I have this little clicky button here and I can grab it and drag it and drop it and move things down. Not great, not bad. It's not really all that amazing. It's kind of ugly looking. It's just kind of the, the basic, basic Windows interface, but it, it works okay. Uh, I tried dragging things up a level. and the, For me, it says everything works. Everything drag and drop, drag and drop. I have trouble dragging and dropping with this thing too. Now, let me give you an idea. If I want to see, I want to take this one here. I'm going to dra grab this one. If I want to just drag it up one, it kind of pulls it weird. Or I can pull it down here and it puts it there. I, I, I can't, it's, it just seems like it's, 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 it, I'm trying to drag this bone up to the middle, and it's not dragging. It's just it goes back to where it was. So some of the dragging and dropping isn't all that great. And when you want to drag, say I want to drag something to the good, it just seems like it's not super intuitive. If I wanted to drag it to good, I should be able just to drag it and have it attached to the good, and I I can't do that. I'm not really a big fan of that. So that really is a significant downside, in, as far as my opinion. I also think it wasn't intuitive to have semicolons used to separate ideas. What you can do. Is I'll throw some. I'll just say, oops, I hit F6. I idea one, and I can do a semicolon. I, idea two. Semicolon idea three. When I hit it, great. It'll it'll create three different ideas. Neat. I would also just just like to be able to do hit the enter button, enter button, and just have it work for me though as well. Okay, not great. Mm, I think it's on the downside. The other thing I, I don't understand is why I can't use just basic Windows commands. I've got to right click, I've got to go to the file menu, I've got to use F keys. If I just want to copy and paste something, I just want to be able to move something quickly, it makes it really hard for me. The, the, the basic cut and paste and whatever don't work. To me, that's just, again, that's too slow for me. And I'm not overly excited about that. So for me overall, looking at the brain, there are definitely a lot of very, very neat things that are available. I like the fact that I can look at my desktop while I'm working on this. I can have it off the side so I can be searching and using it and, and in, linking and, and interacting. That really works great. However, I just find that entering information, hitting the F buttons, not being able to drag and drop really all that effectively, not being able to copy and paste with keyboard shortcuts, from a productivity standpoint, I'm going to have to say potentially pass on this for now. It has a lot of great things working for it. I think some of the shortcomings just are holding it back just enough that it's not quite where I need it to be.